I'm glad you brought that up because it raises an interesting distinction for me, Jono Diaz, because Sammy Sosa, while playing baseball professionally in the United States, maintains his home in the Dominican and I guess sees himself in that way, whereas you, on the other hand, were raised in the United States, in New Jersey. Is there a difference in perception of color? I, I think that there's a couple of issues here about this, and I, I feel we should approach it now not to disagree with my interlocutor. I just, as someone who knows Santo Domingo pretty well, I mean, I do, um, who goes to Santo Domingo a lot, who was born there, who spent my childhood there, I can safely tell you that Dominicans have absolutely no problems distinguishing people across race. And in fact, Sammy Sosa is seen as a black Dominican. In fact, some of Sammy Sosa's early experiences as a Dominican ball player before he became famous in the Dominican Republic often are characterized by the racial component, where Sammy, along with other black ball players, are not allowed into certain clubs. They just walk up and people are like, no, you can't come into this club. It is a private party. Code for your ass is way too black. <laughs> and so I don't want anyone to get it twisted. The Dominican Republic, nor Panama, nor any of these other places are racial paradises and the United States is a racial inferno. I think people use different language and different behavior to code the kind of racial economy, the racial hierarchies. Now, as far as uh, your question, I think that it's not only where one spends most of the time, but also how one gets politicized. Because I know Dominicans who've lived in Santo Domingo their whole life and have a very different political worldview that allows them to understand the way race works in a place like Santo Domingo. And I know people who lived their whole lives in New Jersey and think that racism is, doesn't exist, that we're all one people. And I think that it's important for us to understand that the world is a complicated thing but that forces like racism and like sexism really are pervasive. They're stronger than we give them credit for. And even in places where don't, we don't think they exist, if you scratch a little bit, if you dig underneath, you begin to see their cold, hard calculus operating there underneath our vision. When you say cold, hard calculus, does that calculus, does that calculation include wealth? Is Sammy Sosa therefore viewed differently in the Dominican today now that he is a wealthy man than he was when he was young and poor? No question. No question. I mean, Sammy Sosa, the, you know, multi-millionaire is certainly having people call the clubs before he arrives and making sure Same they know he's coming. Into, yeah. Yes, so that they let him in. I mean, wealth has a wonderful way across the board of altering people's perceptions of you. Now, this doesn't change the fact that this calculus continues to operate, because if I take Sammy Sosa's wealth away from him, just throw him on the street, he's still not getting into that club. 